Hello and welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of June 18th, 2015. I'm City Council Vice President Jesse Adams. I'll be chairing tonight. We'll start out with public comment. Each person has three minutes to speak. Jasper Lapiansky, if you could state your name and your address, please. regards to the uh, way that I walk to and from my house, which is uh, basically just as you might expect from here up to there. But uh, let's just say hypothetically speaking, I was in a wheelchair or on crutches, I wouldn't be able to do that because the sidewalk is uh, on the way up the hill to the Forbes Library is corroded down to the bare, um, whatever the metal underlying concrete rebar. There we go. It's corroded down to the rebar. The holes are probably about eight inches deep in some places, and I don't see anyone with any sort of mobility impairment being able to, to use it, which is one, uh, the pretty much the only route on foot uh, or on wheelchair to the Forbes Library. Also, even without the pedestrian detour, you would still have to cross this section to get up the hill to Smith College unless you were across the street um, prior to that. The mayor and the, and the Department of Public Works are aware of this issue. Um, I only notified them about 10 days ago. But it's something that would cost very little to fix that I think uh, should be addressed immediately because it has the potential not only to injure a person but also to incur liability for the city. And I would appreciate if uh, at some point someone were to bring you know, someone's attention to it who has the ability to, let's say, pour concrete. Thanks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, City Council. All right, uh, Mr. Acting Mayor. Mayor. Uh, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Con Street, uh, Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, I see you there, Jesse. Now, all right, uh, you know, I was listening to him, but I remember uh, just a while ago, a few weeks ago, I came in with a complaint about a place up in Florence where they're building a new building. And the building is so close to the road that come winter time, when you got to plow, you you got to make the sidewalks four feet wide. You're not going to be able to shovel that four feet wide because it's too close to the building from the road. So uh, so I went in and I made a complaint. Now I think the building department <laughs> in the city here ought to be working more on things like that and more on disabilities because there's plenty of disabilities all over the city. Uh, you know, I've been around, I used to be on a committee for disabilities, uh, I'm no longer on that committee, but uh, I go around the city and I find all these different things and, and you know, some of the stores in this city that don't have access, they don't have push button access or anything, uh, you know, why do we not have somebody going around looking this up and stuff, right, that's working with the planning commission or working with the, the planning board and uh, and saying, okay, now here's a problem here, right? Let's address this problem and get it out of the way, all right? We don't have that. We don't have a committee for that. Uh, we have a committee for disabilities, yes, right? And they do a good job on the disabilities they work on. But we have several other disabilities that are more minor <coughs> and, uh, and still need addressing, all right? Now, with that, uh, you know, I got one minute left. Right. I came here tonight originally, right, to uh, welcome Jody on board, right, and I find I am premature a little bit, and uh, well, there'll be a new date set, as uh, uh, Jesse knows, uh, Mr. Adams knows, right. and uh, and that'll come up later on, uh, you know, but I think Jody is going to be a great person for that job because. Uh, with the diverse society we have and uh, a perfect police department that Mr. Sankowitz is leaving, right? I think between the two and her little tweaking, I think we can make it a perfect city. So, thank you. And we have a very good mayor here, right? You know, he stands his own. Uh, sometimes he messes up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm the only one can say that and get away with it, I think. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you, and thank you all, and uh, you all have a good night. All right now, I gotta go, and uh, uh, you know, I'll be in Hartford till four o'clock in the morning, and I'll see you all tomorrow sometime. Thank you, Mr. Martin. You're welcome. That's all that we have for uh, people who are signed up. Is there any other public comment? Looks like there's none. Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councillor Adams. Here. Councillor Dwight. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Councillor <coughs> Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shearer. Here. Councillor Spector. Here. I'll appoint Councillor Labarge to the Enrollment Committee. I believe we have no public hearings. Are there any communications from the mayor? No. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll move on to proclamations, resolutions, recognitions, and one-minute announcement of uh, announcements of events. Excuse me. Uh, we have the second reading of the resolution calling for transparency and public representation regarding natural gas infrastructure. And is there a motion on second reading? Uh, so moved. Approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, would the council like another full reading of it? I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Um, Councillor Klein has proposed uh, what seems to be a, a significant amendment. Um, I would request that Councillor Klein read it. Okay. All right. So, whereas a 2013 research report released by the Office of Senator Edward Markey documents that between 2000 and 2011, by not replacing leaking natural gas pipelines, gas companies have passed on to Massachusetts ratepayers between $640 million and $1.5 billion in costs for unaccounted for gas that never reaches their homes, businesses, and municipalities, and that this leaked gas has contributed, contributed irreparably to the degradation of the public's health, climate change, and between 2004 and 2012 caused over 250 explosions. And whereas, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, in 2011, leaks and other processes of the natural gas distribution system were the largest source of methane emissions in the U.S., accounting for 19 percent of total methane emissions, methane being a gas that possesses global warming potential far greater than other greenhouse gases. Specifically, it has been measured to be over 80 times more powerful a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. And whereas this unaccounted for gas, if captured through repair and upgrade of the current pipeline infrastructure, could likely meet a significant portion, if not all, of our energy needs and allow for new hookups. And whereas Massachusetts House Bill 2870, Senate Bill 1768, an act relative to protecting consumers of gas and electricity from paying for leaked and unaccounted for gas, seeks to protect customers from paying for unaccounted for gas by prohibiting providers from including the cost of unaccounted for gas as well as the costs of reducing or remedying loss in the rate base. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts calls for Massachusetts gas companies to, rather than build new pipeline in the state, repair the current pipeline infrastructure to eliminate the leakage of natural gas and, in so doing, reduce the health, safety, and environmental dangers associated with gas leaks, and goes on record as supporting uh, Massachusetts House Bill 2870, Senate Bill 1768, to prohibit Massachusetts gas companies from passing on to consumers costs associated with leaked unaccounted for gas. So, First of all, I, I think I support what you're saying. I, I, I'm, sorry, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to make a motion oh, to accept the amendment. I will make that motion to I'll accept the amendment. That. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for doing this and putting this forward. Would you like to just add to it before Councilor Spector chimes in? Yeah. Just uh, this addresses a piece that the um, the um, the original resolution did not address, which is um, leaks and uh, the fact that that uh, consumers are paying for leaked gases, what, it, what uh, are called unaccounted for gases. Um, just a little bit of background, there are 20,000 known leaks throughout Massachusetts, and um, they contribute to um, public health issues, uh, individual health issues, uh, climate change as the, as the resolution, uh, as the amendment states, and um, also danger 
uh, related to explosions. And there have been 250 explosions in the last eight years in Massachusetts related to um, gas leakage. Councilor Spector? Yeah, I just had a question whether on the resolution, which is mostly about the pipeline, um, could you explain the connection between the two or how you would see the connection between the two? Well, we have um, the original resolution talks about um, needing transparency because the gas companies are threatening, in fact, to, uh, or there's a moratorium in place so that we're not able to um, create new hookups, which, as the, resolu the original resolution states, it could, in fact, uh, do things like cramp our ability as a city to uh, create the affordable housing units that we have, pr we have in the works. Um, and what this talks about, when we talk about leaks, we're talking about gas that um, is getting lost, that if, in fact, the, pipe, the current existing pipeline were repaired, we would have enough gas to create those hookups. Right. And again, I think I support this. The part of the transparency is I'd like to see the engineering reports, because I think this is an excellent question. I think there are a couple of questions around this. If, for, for example, the pipeline is, from my understanding, most of the gas is needed because of a number of peak days during the year when we won't have gas. And so the question becomes, could that be made up by, by um, taking care of the pipes and the leaks that are on the pipes? Could it be made up by having a storage facility? We don't know. So I think that one of the things is the transparency piece is what I wouldn't want to do, I'd, I'd like more information because sometimes, for example, renovating a house costs more than building a new house. So I'm not sure what kind of cost structure there would be to repair the current pipes. It may b very well be that this is a much more logical way to go. Why aren't we going that way? And there are other reasons to do it, including, as you pointed out, the methane. It should be done anyway, the explosions, the methane. But it may not be that it ties in directly to the pipeline. It may be prohibitive cost-wise. I don't think it should be passed on the consumer as well. So I, I basically support this. I'm just not sure yet until we have that kind of question answered. And I am attending a meeting where um, Columbia Gas will be there and I'm going to ask some of these questions. I'd like an engineer to answer these questions. Okay, what is the cost of repairing the pipeline? How much gas are we losing exactly? Can it make up that difference? Um, so I'm not sure right now. I definitely would support this regardless of the pipeline piece because I think it's an important piece. But I'm not sure whether right now I'd be ready to support it mm -hmm. as an amendment to, to this resolution. Mm -hmm. Is that? Councilor O'Donnell. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Councilor Klein for drafting this amendment and um, explaining it um, uh, very well tonight. And I hear a lot of the um, comments that Councilor Spector is, is making, and those resonate with me as well. Um, the reason why I support uh, the amendment is because I do see a direct nexus between uh, the capacity problem that, the, um, that these companies are citing is the reason why they want to build an entirely new pipeline. And um, the issue, the, the ongoing pervasive issue of unaccounted for gas, which <coughs> has a direct cost to ratepayers in, in the Commonwealth. And I think as we talked about last time, this is an environmental issue, but it's also a consumer issue. And the thing I do like about this amendment, although we could always get more information to, to back it up, is that um, it makes that case very clearly. And if you read House Bill 2870, um, what it basically does is, as Councillor Klein explains, is uh, make sure that during the rate setting process that the gas that is lost in transmission can't be used um, in, the, in, the, in the calculation of, of rates. In other words, um, consumers aren't, aren't liable for the cost to make those repairs. And right now, we're seeing that they really are. Um, I don't remember the exact figure, but I read a, a pretty recent story, um, not only just about the moratoria, but also about an increase um, in rates that is partly due to the need for these companies to make these repairs. So um, insofar as our resolution is an environmentally concerned resolution and also a consumer issue, I like tying this into the state legislation because um, it, it makes that consolidated argument in a way that I think is in the interest of, of the city. So thank you again. Before we vote on the amendment, if I just wanted to comment. I, 
I would support this totally as a separate resolution, is all I'm saying, because somehow that's tying it into whether the need for the pipeline, I'm just afraid somebody could walk in like an engineer and kind of show us that how silly we are because it costs nine times as much to do the repairs as it will to produce the new pipeline. If it was a whole separate resolution, I'd vote for it immediately. So that was my only concern. I, and I, too, really appreciate the work you did on this. So. Councilor Murphy? Well, where, where is this legislation in the process? Do you know? Um, it's sitting in um, which committees? It's sitting in committees of the, it was proposed in, um, it was introduced in January, in mid-January, and it's still sitting in committee. But it has each, um, I think in the House it has something like 45 co-sponsors and Senate something like 24. Because yeah. I would absolutely concur, nothing's going to get these utilities to fix their pipeline like the fact that they can't bill off their losses to the consumers. So if that's just going up into the air and they can't bill for it, they're going to fix it. Absolutely. So I support that part of it. I'm just, you know, question as well, do we want to? wait and see how that process goes and then chime in once the legislature comes across well, on it and and do this do this amendment the way it is now and then wait and see how that comes out and then and then support that I mean uh, actually I, w I wouldn't necessarily wait if since you were talking to me can I <laughs> I would actually say I'd love to see this as a separate resolution um, because regardless of where the pipeline comes out, I, I feel like it becomes kind of a stepchild to the pipeline issue. I think it's an important issue one way or the other, and I would support it 100% as a separate resolution. I think they both are, both transparency in the process and also support for the fact that the consumers shouldn't have to pay for losses that can't be explained yeah. by the utility company. So they're both I good. agree. Councilor Labarge? Yeah, I, I really like the language on the amendment that Councilor Klein has put pl in place. It does talk about the environment. It does talk in, about the consumers. I don't have a problem with it. And I think with the resolution, with the amendment, we should move it on. And then whatever you get, Councilor, for information, bring it back to us, Councilors, because we could always amend that again. Okay. Further discussion on the amendment? Roll call vote on the amendment, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Is there any discussion on the measure as amended? Move second reading. Second. Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Are there any one minute announcements of events? Councilor Klein? I'll just pull it up. <laughs> okay. So this Friday, tomorrow, that is, June 19th is Juneteenth, which is the oldest uh, nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States, dating back to 1865. It's the 150th anniversary of Juneteenth, um, and it marks uh, the day that, the, that Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas with news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. Um, Although it was two years after President Lincoln delivered the Emancipation Proclamation, it has become kind of the, the day of commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. And here in Northampton, there's going to be a celebration at the David Ruggles Center um, from 2 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, so the day after Juneteenth, June, uh, Saturday, June 20th. And I'll just share a tiny bit more information. The Ruggles Center is at 225 Nonatuck Street in Florence. And um, there will be two <coughs> exhibits opened at the David Ruggles Center in honor of Juneteenth and a walking tour at 3 p.m. Uh, the Cosme and Bell will be rung at the Civic Center at 345. And there's a performance of the Spirit of the Hills Chorus with Songs of Freedom at 430 at the Ruggles Center. Thank you. I believe there are no presentations. Move into, we'll move into licenses and petitions. There's a petition for secondhand dealer's license from the vintage seller, which is at 11 Bridge Street 
and the petitioner is Jasmine Montanero. Is there a motion to? Second. Is Ms. Montanero here? Doesn't look like it. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. We'll move to approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Is there a to motion second. to approve? It's made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Next, we'll move to reports of committees, appointments, and elections. The appointment of Jody Casper as the chief of police. This matter is actually not on tonight. It's 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 on for referral to the committee on rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances, and that's by charter that um, department heads must go through the appointments process. That's not a, a, a council rule that can be suspended. Also, uh, there's on June 29th there'll be a special city council meeting at 7 p.m. on the request of the mayor, and that is to uh, appoint Jody Casper as chief of police before the current chief uh, finishes his time here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that will be? Yeah. I'd, I'd move referral. Second. Second. Any discussion on the referral? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Next, we'll move to new appointments. We have a new appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Um, two, actually. Douglas A. Ross from 73 Barrett Street and Joel Morse from 51 Vernon Street have uh, uh, they've received positive recommendations from the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. Is there a motion to accept both of their nominations? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The measure passes. There's also an appointment to the Disability Commission. Uh, Chris Palamas, 659 Park Hill Road in Florence. And uh, his, his recommendation was also approved from the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. Um, is there a to accept. Is there a second? Is there any discussion on this appointment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Measure passes. And we also have Carla Vellis is being appointed to the Human Rights Commission. She lives at 80 Barrett Street. And she also received a positive recommendation. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion on this appointment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Abstentions? The measure passes. Next, we'll move to committee minutes. Um, I'd like to move these as a group if there's no objection. Is there a motion to move these as a group? So moved. Yes, move them as a group. So, made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on this matter? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The measure passes. We'll now recess for finance committee. <clears throat> when you're ready, Pam, just call our roll here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Shera. Here. We have uh, two sets of minutes to approve as our first action. Minutes of April 28th, 15. Minutes of June 4th, 15. Do we have a motion on those? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. And now we have some financial orders uh, <clears throat> and some transfers. The first one upon the recommendation, recommendation of the mayor, order that $509,024 be appropriated from the FY15 general fund undesignated fund balance as follows. Um, and this is for snow and ice. Uh, $169,197 for snow and ice uh, PS overtime, $35,853 snow and ice OM snow removal contractors, $144,277 snow and ice OM vehicular supplies, $158,097 snow and ice OM snow removal supplies, and $1,600 snow and ice OM um, R&M supplies. Do we have a motion? And second? Second. All right, and the mayor's here to talk to us about this. Yeah, this is our annual uh, uh, New England ritual of uh, trying to true up our snow and ice budget, which uh, the council um, granted authority to deficit spend uh, under. And um, as you see, we give you a breakdown of each of the various uh, line items that uh, need to be uh, replenished so that we can finish out the fiscal year. Um, so you know, again, uh, this is uh, this is uh, fairly standard. We had budgeted. 
you'll note for 2015, we had budgeted uh, $426,350. Um, and so uh, this is uh, how short we fell. We are in the current, in the proposed budget, you'll note that we are increasing that number slightly um, up to 468. Uh, so we have been trying to gradually get it up to, um, to some of the historical averages. Mm -hmm. um, but this is again, uh, if you look at the chart, it's over time, it sort of waxes and wanes depending on how, um, how bad a winter we had. Mm -hmm. um, the last one like this was 2011 uh, when we really got socked. And, and then, you know, this has been uh, almost on the same level as 2011. So just to remind everybody, if we, if we budget as much as we did last year, we're entitled to deficit spend and then make it up now so that the, we don't have to carry it on the budget, but we can make it up. So for the folks that actually wondered what the total number was, it's like 930? Uh, it's nine. It came to um, nine. Uh, I'm sorry. I had that right in front of me. It's nine, 933. 933. So that's the total number yeah. for 933072. The miserable winter that we finally thought out from. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. So it's a big it's a big number. So. People know what it took to do their driveways. That's what it took to do the city. Any questions from the committee for the mayor? Please. So the number um, is actually almost double or more than double, right, than what we had budgeted. I'm yeah. just wondering if a, any kind of, you know, study has been done to look at just the amount of snow. Is it commensurate with the doubling of the funds needed to was it kind of double the amount of snow that we expected? I mean, are we really are we able to track kind of the? Well, it's a it's it's a combination because every winter is different, and even uh, there can even be um, lots of uh, winter events that don't have snow accumulation, where there's freezing rain, um, uh, and we still have to go out and pre-treat the roads and sand the roads, um, and then there's also different types of snow. Um, you know, we had some light, fluffy snowstorms, which were great, and those were really easy. And then you get wet snow when you start to break plow equipment, and um, you know, we start to have transmission problems. And so, you know, some of the expenses, uh, you know, you note here, um, you know, vehicular supplies. That's mostly parts uh, replacing broken, you know, fins on plow blades, things like that. Um, so it's not. I don't know that you can actually correlate it to the amount of snowfall. Um, and of course, we didn't get as much snow. Well, we got a lot of snow, not as much as Worcester, and uh, Worcester was the, the leader in the state. But um, so yeah, it's really it's uh, it's multifactorial. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I mean, the logic behind it is uh, that we don't raise the money because we're not sure we're going to need it. But where we have reasonable yeah. reserves now, we have the money to pay, so we can pay for it if it happens. But we don't raise the money just in case. And take it from the taxpayers unless we really need it. Councilor Bodge? Mayor, have we ever thought about going back and getting the snow insurance that they have? It's not really offered. Uh, I think <coughs> the one company that we had gotten it from um, uh, may not be in business anymore. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, not too good. They paid out too many claims. Because uh, I know when, when they started paying out, um, they started then raising their premiums yeah. and then they started raising the total number of inches you had to get to and so the cost benefit analysis um, just we, we pulled out while we were ahead yeah. um, and and really there's not really much out there anymore on it and I'm sure after this winter there's definitely <laughs> nobody selling snow insurance yeah, it worked um, the first couple of years we did okay but then they figured it out and yeah and they started changing where the snow got measured and and of course, the, the initial policy rider, you know, the cost of it went up significantly. Mm. So, so anyway, yeah, that's I, I, that's a common question. Um, so, any more any more questions for the mayor on this one? No, the we. The thing I did want to note is just noting that you know because we had the glitch in getting this on the agenda last time, two we readings. do need two readings in the, in the so that we can close out the fiscal year um, in balance. Yeah. All right. So. Not hearing any more questions. All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please aye. say aye. 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 You opposed? Okay. All right. The next one, another transfer upon the recommendation of the mayor, ordered that the following FY15 budgetary transfers are made, and these are in the water department. Um, we are transferring from OM Architecture and Engineering $32,000, and that is going over to uh, Water Enterprise Fund permanent salary. So $32,000 
move, moving from architecture and engineering to permanent salaries. Uh, do we have a motion on this one? Make a motion. Second. Okay. Any questions for the mayor? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And then the last one is a number of budgetary transfers upon the recommendation of the mayor order that the following FY 2015 budgetary transfers uh, be hereby made and they are uh, going the first bunch will be where the money is going um, MIS repair and maintenance on computer equipment ten thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars unemployment insurance uh, for for claims seven hundred and eighty five dollars central services to pay for electricity thirty one thousand five hundred and sixty four dollars central services natural gas thirty two thousand twenty dollars central services repair and maintenance of hvac equipment six thousand eight hundred and ninety four dollars and here's where it's coming from mis permanent salaries ten thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars the unemployment insurance is unemployment compensation, $24,240. Medical insurance, employee insurance benefits, $24,800. And then interest on notes, $24,594. So $84,249 is being transferred from one set of accounts to another. Do we have a motion on I this? Motion. Second? Okay, and questions for the mayor on this one? Um, I did actually note one, uh, one, I guess, error I'd love to, I'd, I'd like to see amended, and that's just MIS is now IT. So if we could have that amended, um, that's just a small Scrivener's error. Um, the MIS department is now called IT. Oh, so IT. Okay. Can, and that's our, that's our fault mm -hmm. on our side. So the department formerly known as MIS. Yes, exactly. Move to change MIS to IT. Second. Any um, questions on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so to the there's a, line. there's a line missing on the display. I'm not sure why. If you're showing it on yours, so the the home version is my my you're version. Showing is the mayor's office at the top of your list. Uh, North, the city of Northampton yes. and city yes. council upon the recommendation of the no, mayor. I'm saying that. the first no, department first listed is it the mayor's office? Huh. Okay. Yeah, see, so you yeah. have to you have to double click on the Excel sheet and it closes out without it being. Yeah, I don't have any mayor's office on this. Okay, one. so we, we well, the order. Uh, can, you, can you open, can you double click on that? Excel? I, I can't because I print it and then put it in a PDF file. I know you, you I know. Yeah, so we have. You a, had an issue with with uh, expenses for license commission things. Yeah, there's a. But it isn't in, it isn't in this. It's order. in the total. It's in the 84 to Oh, it isn't. It is but in the, the total. But the okay. mayor's office line somehow got truncated off the top. Yeah. So anyway. It, it's not on the. This for counselors at home, there's uh, and, and folks at home, <laughs> counselors at home, <laughs> and folks at home uh, there's a mayor's office transfer that's part of this total, um, 84 249. That's O and M contractual services, and it's two thousand three hundred and seventy one dollars. And that that was um, for court reporting for the license commission because we had to hire court reporters for a couple of for hearings. A couple of hearings. Um, so that's why that that budget got. Um, no, but just to be clear, we should amend this order. Amend so. It. Well, the expresses well, that. Just amend it. You, you said it out loud, but yeah, it, it, it was more a matter of yeah. You can amend you the order. That or I can give you the item. copy. Yes. Yeah. We did submit this order. It's oh, just so the way that it got it just, got truncated. So. Um, okay. I just like to vote on the actual. Yes, correct. It, well, the total is correct, right? Yeah, the eighty-four thousand two hundred forty-nine dollars is correct. Just it's one the of the language. receiving accounts is the mayor's office for the top, yeah. for license commission court reporting services. Right. Well, yeah. Okay, well, I suggest that. Does the, the clerk have but a correct copy? Of please make an amendment. And we'll well, I'm not in finance. Okay. Okay. We're not in finance. Move to amend. To Move to amend. Yeah. All right. Have this copy if you want. It's fine. Yeah, why don't we give it to <laughs> yeah, yeah. so she's yeah. got it. Yeah. So does everybody know it's, the mayor what was the total of 2,000? <laughs> what's the total for mayors of 2,471? 2,471. Two, Two three seven one, and that was your amendment, correct? Yes. Two three seven one. It was seconded. Yeah. So all in favor of the amendment in finance, please say aye. 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 Any more questions for the mayor? And again, the total was the same. That line item was missing. All right. All in favor of a aye. positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And 
I don't know of any business we didn't expect would come up. So I think that finishes finance. So a motion to adjourn finance? To adjourn. Second. All favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. We'll now move to financial orders. Um, financial order appropriating $509,024 from the FY15 general fund undesignated fund balances to various accounts. Um, I'll skip the reading because we just went over it. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? We got to do roll call. Is there any discussion on this matter? Roll call, please. Councillor Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Suspend rule fourteen. Second. Discussion on the suspension. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Move second reading. Second. second. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. <clears throat> yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. We'll move to financial order for budgetary transfers. So moved. Second. Second. We just this is uh, water, I think. We're in. We just finished that. Yes. We just did it. Snow and ice. We get two readings. I suspended the rule. Sure. Okay, I'm sorry. So, motion on second reading. Uh, excuse me. Motion on first reading on this matter was made and seconded. Is there a discussion on this matter? We got a roll call. Correct, but there's discussion comes before roll call. Roll call. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councilor suspend. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. Discussion on the motion? Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention? Uh, opposition? Abstentions? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, is there a motion <laughs> on second reading? So moved. Second. Okay. Further discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. We'll move to financial order for FY 2015 budgetary transfers. So move. Second. The motion to approve has been made and seconded. Is there further discussion on this matter? Roll call, please. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. Well, we don't need to. Oh, we don't. Mm. Yes. yes, we do. We request second read. Oh, okay. Two readings requested tonight. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Second. All those in favor to suspend? Aye. 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 We get a majority vote on that. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Uh, uh, any opposition? Any abstentions? Second reading. Uh, motion on second reading. So moved. Second. second. Any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shell. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. <clears throat> the order passes. We'll now move to the order to rescind borrowing authority of one point five million dollars for Pulaski Parks improvement. Is there a motion on second reading? Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Now we'll move to budget transfers. This is a second reading. Move is there, to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second reading. Is there any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. We'll now move to the FY15 general fund undesignated fund balance to fiscal stability uh, fiscal stability stabilization fund. On second Is there a second to the motion on second reading? Second. second. Is there any further discussion on this matter? 
Roll call vote, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. The measure passes. We'll move to gift fund for Northampton Senior Services van. Is there a motion to accept on second? Move to approve it. Second. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Roll call vote, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lamar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Next, we'll move to the financial orders to support the City of Northampton fiscal year 2016 proposed budget. We'll be voting on the general fund budget, the sewer enterprise fund budget, the water enterprise fund budget, solid waste enterprise fund budget, stormwater enterprise enterprise fund budget, and a revolving fund. Um, <clears throat> What I'd like to do is take these as a group and wave second reading. Um, yep. Yes, there's any objection. Is there a motion on second reading? So moved. Second reading. Second. Made and seconded. Is there further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. We'll move now to the FY16 financial orders to support the capital project plan on second reading. Move approved. Second it. Is there any? That's a group. Yes, is that, that's a motion to take it as a group. Yes, well, moved as a group. Is there any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. We'll now move to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 71F. Is there a motion to accept on second reading? Move to accept. Second. second. Is there any further discussion on this matter? Roll call, please. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shero. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. The measure passes. We'll now move to orders and ordinances. Before us, we have an ordinance pertaining to Special Conservancy District on first reading. This received a positive recommendation from the Planning Board and the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. In the year 2015, upon the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing that the Code of Ordinances, City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended by revising sections 350, 350B, 350C of said code, updating layout for the Special Conservancy District and allowing reuse of existing historic, religious, and educational buildings. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council, assembles as follows. Section 1, that section 30B of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows delete special conservancy column in its entirety and that section 350C of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Delete sections on dimensions for special conservancy district from this table. Add new table of use dimensional regulations special conservancy as the following. And what I would request is is if Ms. Carolyn Michigan. Yeah, move to recognize. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And if you could walk us through the, dis the, this ordinance now makes a reference to descriptions and requirements. If you could walk us through that, please. Sure. Thank you. Um, so just as a, um, a background, this is sort of a, in the progression of trying to implement sustainable Northampton. We're moving, taking each section or each zoning district and creating its own table with um, the dimensions and the uses so you can find about 90% of what you need to know about that particular district in one table. Um, this one moved to the next level or ca came forward because we found that we needed to make some corrections to the Special Conservancy so we decided to go ahead and just um, bring it all up to uh, um, the same formatting that we have um, for the other districts. Um, so, uh, the, but the the most everything in the current Special Conservancy District stays exactly the same. The, um, the 
um, uses, the restriction on any new residential development in the Special Conservancy, which is the FEMA mapped 100 year floodplain um, and also 500 year um, flood elevation. So I just brought this map to show you. I don't know if the greens are going to show up very well, but Special Conservancy consists of all of the meadows area here plus these fingers along the streams, the Mill River and other perennial streams going across Northampton. Um, and um, the minor, the changes um, that we felt were important to bring forward now relate to um, an oversight when we went through and um, rezoned these stream corridors from watershed protection, which was a different floodplain um, overlay and made it consistent with the Special Conservancy District that had been uh, previously only the Meadows area. And what we had done was take the water protection overlay um, along those stream corridors and converted that to a straight underlying special conservancy district. What that did was, um, in particular, there's an area in Leeds where the floodplain comes up on Main Street, um, or water, Main Street in Leeds. <laughs> and um, I have an aerial photo that maybe some of you guys can share, but See it covers the, um, one of the old church buildings. Um, and when it had previously been urban residential B, um, it's right here. So under the urban residential B district and the other residential districts, frankly, um, we had gone a couple of years ago and modified the zoning to allow flexibility for the reuse of those historic religious and school buildings through site plan approval from the planning board. Um, so when it was urban residential B with a watershed protection overlay, there were these um, um, allowances for greater flexibility for the reuse of those buildings so long as those buildings remained standing. But when the Special Conservancy District replaced the watershed protection district, we um, inadvertently left out the language that um, allowed the flexibility for the reuse of those um, historic buildings. So with this change in front of you, it adds the language um, that was and still is in the URB, URA, and all the other districts, frankly, um, to allow the reuse of that, um, of those types of buildings. Those are, the, this is the only place where um, this slipped by that un unbeknownst to us until we really got down and started looking at the reuse of that building in the last year. Um, we realized that you couldn't carve off and create a new lot because new lot requirements in the Special Conservancy are so stringent based on the floodplain standards. So that's the biggest reason why we're bringing this, why this rose to the level, top level, and then um, on its way we made some other minor adjustments to um, um, detached accessory structures and uh, photovoltaic systems. Councilor Barge, Councilor Klein. Carolyn, mm -hmm. you talk about leads on Main Street. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the church. Right. Because that's been sitting there for quite a while. Right. And is that the reason why? Because what can be done with it and could not be done with it that it didn't go or sell? Um, no, I mean there are many reasons probably that we don't understand why it hasn't sold yet. I think part of that is because it's it was created for for one use, and so it's hard many times to find um, an appropriate reuse of those buildings. So I think the primary reason why that hasn't sold and and come back um, into use is because. It's hard to find an end user for those things, but we, I mean, and that's the whole reason why we adjusted the zoning in the first place, is to allow a little bit more latitude. Thank you. Pastor Klein. I have two questions. So is this going to actually allow for that church building, one, to separate the rectory as a separate saleable property? Yes. Um, so they can be divided, yes. so that's one thing. but. Um, does this actually do something in terms of the floodplain zoning in terms of insurance? Because I know that's one of the reasons that they're having a hard time selling it because it's hard to find insurance for this building because it's in the flood zone. It will not address any of that because 
no matter what, it's still in the floodplain. And there's still standards, um, even with renovation of buildings, anyone who comes in will have to meet the um, standards under the building code and under the Wetlands Protection Act for construction or reuse of a building. So it's not gonna address that at all. It's still in the floodplain. It's just um, from a zoning perspective and a, land and a use perspective, it gives more flexibility. Is there any further discussion? Actually, is there a motion on first reading? So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Council Adon. If I can, yeah, I just, I just note, I mean, as the person who represents the Meadows, I just reinforce that I don't see any, there's no changes to anyone who lives in a special conservancy district in the Meadows. I mean, you, you can't uh, build any new residential units in the Meadows anyway, and so this is just a clarification for other parts of the city, so it seems ha harmless to me. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Council Klein? Yes. Councilor Labard? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. <clears throat> Next we have three ordinances for referral. One to or, uh, revise section 312-102 of the parking prohibited all times on, this one's on Crescent Street. We also have an ordinance to revise section 312-99 violations and penalties. Um, that well, both of those will be referred to Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. And we also have an ordinance to establish a special committee to review city ordinances, and that will also be referred to Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. Is there a motion to refer those as a group? For all three. A motion. Made and seconded. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Are there any updates from committee chairs? Information requests? New business? Motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Whipsy. That's it.